You're listening to the Floodgates Podcast. My name is Joey Brake. And I'm Kenton Brake. And we are joined by the one and only Viviana Brake, my mom. Thank you so much for being on the episode. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me back. It's going to be a fun conversation. We're back with episode five. Um, this season has been so, so special. Uh, we just got back from celebrating your birthday. I know. 50 years. Let's go. Such a big deal. Um, it was so much fun. We got to go on a little family trip um, to get away to celebrate your life. Um, and it was so much fun. How are you feeling at 50? I think it's just a number, but yes. <laughs> um, I think that when you come to this big, like big, um, kind of like landmarks of your life, you start evaluating things. So I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for where I am. I'm, I'm just hopeful for this new decade coming ahead. I think you go by decades after 50. You don't want to count every year, but um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to be able to just share life with you guys and um, be part of a community that cares and grows and investing in the eternal is something that even becomes more real the older you get. So I'm just uh, in a very... Uh, grateful season of my life yeah they say the 50s is new 30 anyway so enjoy it i know let's go that's what there's hope for me (laughs) one day um i'm really excited to talk with you guys today um we're going to be talking about the idea of wholeness um and this um really important thing i think in the time that we live in today um i'm really excited to hear your expertise on when it comes to mental health anxiety worry um when it comes to things about the heart and the soul and so i'm really excited for that um we've been in a really special season as a church we just celebrated mother's day um we're going into um the new collection going into summer really excited for this summer um so special times um and thank you for listening to the podcast it's it's a special time to to that we get to talk about things in depth break concepts down that we don't necessarily get to in a message but have a conversation about um, how we can apply things to our life personally and um, really create this community for change um, this culture where these people can connect and um, I I love this community that we're building yeah what I love about wholeness is it's a daily thing I I think David wrote it well in the Psalms when he said um, creating me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit in me. And so wholeness is not just a a one-time event. It's a daily surrender. It's a daily denial. And it's just understanding that God intended you to be whole and that he wants you to love him back whole. Yeah, so let's kind of define what whole is. I think wholeness is this balance of every part of our inner being, um, uh, whether it's it's our heart, it's our mind, it's our soul, it's our strength. As the scripture says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. And so tonight, today we can kind of break down these different areas of how we can be whole in every part of our life to be the most dynamic um, living being that God truly designed us to be. And so let's dive into the heart. Um, uh, you earlier this year kicked off the first Sunday of the year with the message whole heart. Um, It was a beautiful message, just breaking down the the heart God truly intended us to live with. And in this world of brokenness, it's easy to live with a broken heart, with a wounded heart, with a hurt heart, but that's not the life that God designed us to live. But he designed us to live with a whole heart. And um, you said this, um, I went back, and you you said this, at the root of everything you do is the condition of your heart. And maybe you could maybe talk a little bit about identifying the roots of our heart or the condition of our heart. Maybe it is whole, maybe it is broken, maybe it is hurting. Um, How do we analyze the heart and see where we are at and what are the things we need to do to maybe take the next step to to become whole? Well, what I think that sometimes we want to focus on is on the external. So normally when I talk to people about how's your life going, you want to talk about accomplishments or the things that um, you're frustrated with because they're not working. And we want to control a lot of symptoms and like focus on, hey, I don't like um, how I lash out. Um, I don't like how you talk to me. I don't like um, I want to be more peaceful. I want to have more patience. So 
people that we're in, uh, in relationship with are probably the ones that are going to tell how the, the fastest how our heart is because we are constantly um, spilling out out of the abundance of what we're kind of filled with. Mm -hmm. And so a whole heart, you know, when, when hard times come, you're still able to have peace. Wow. But when you're constantly, I say, being reactive, when you're constantly being triggered, when you're constantly um, being frustrated, and you don't have a lot of moments of peace, I think those are symptoms that will kind of help you go deeper. Yeah. And instead of focusing on behavioral changes, we want to go and look at the root. Mm. We're going to look like, why am I so easily angered? Why am I so frustrated all the time? Why am I so impatient? Well, there has to be something going on in my heart that is maybe not resolved it is sometimes hurt that we carry. Um, I do an exercise that is called like um, the cup, the whole concept of the cup, and we have layers. We have to recognize in those layers, um, are you anxious? What are you anxious about? Projecting things into the future that are not real, mm -hmm. but you're kind of like already predicting it's not gonna go well, so then we're anxious. Somet anxious. So sometimes we're focused too much on the past, and then we're depressed, mm -hmm. so we wanna fix depressed, we want to be happy, but unless we look at what is it that is causing me to look at the past, mm -hmm. maybe there is grief there, maybe there is loneliness, mm -hmm. maybe there is fears that I am not processing or know how to deal with, and maybe there is bitterness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people carry a lot of bitterness when they're hurt and mm -hmm. disappointed and we feel this powerlessness. And so we carry that in our cup. And so everywhere we go, there we are. Mm -hmm. So I would just um, say whatever you're going through on the daily, make sure at the end of the day you bring that to God. Yeah. That you say, God, today I bring you this hurt. Um, I was disappointed or I messed up. Sometimes we act in the flesh and we just want to kind of like sweep it under the rug and start back fresh tomorrow. And that's a good way but we need to understand we don't just repress it. We have to resolve it. Mm -hmm. That's so good. We have to resolve it. And I think this idea of whole is so important because God doesn't do things halfway. Yeah. You know, like he didn't create you with a broken heart. He, can, com he created you with a complete and whole heart. Mm -hmm. And he, he really wants your whole heart. He wants all of you. And so... Um, I think when you find yourself in a moment of analyzing and, and trying to discover why am I easily angered or why am I responding this way or why do I feel this way, what are these emotions coming from, um, that God truly wants all of them. And um, we'll talk a little bit about it later, but I think we can even go into talking about how that goes into our mind when it comes to anxiety and, and all those things. But it's really important that we're aware to bring that to God. Yeah, and I believe a lot of times we try to avoid the root of the issue. And so we think like a new job, oh, that's going to make me whole. Mm -hmm. or, or a new relationship, that's going to make me whole. Or we always try to find something new that we d haven't tried or experienced, but where you go, you are. Yeah. And so if you go into a place, a new job, uh, a new relationship, still broken or still not in a wholeness with God, you're going to find yourself in that same place. And yeah. so it's very important to get to the root of the issue, uh, resolve it, and, and walk through it till you get to a place of peace. Yeah. And I, I think also it's like, if you don't have that whole heart, you will end up doing things half-heartedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way you love your family will be half-heartedly. The way that you do work and the way that you do um, serve will be half-heartedly. The way that you live will be half-heartedly. And you will never live in the whole complete fullness that God created you to live in. And so it, it's really important to identify it and, and to um, do something about it. Um, and I also say you normally give what you have. Yeah. So if you have resentment and somebody comes to you, somewhere in that interaction, you're gonna give some of that. If you want to be nice, but 
you, you're carrying all this pain somewhere in that relationship, you're going to give that. Yeah. And so we cannot give what we don't have. So investing in ourselves is not selfish. And I think that there is this concept in Christianity, especially, that is all about like giving of yourself and um, about others, which is right. But even as God teaches, we are to love others as we love ourselves. There is this self-care aspect of being a believer that is really often forgotten and not often taught of that we should um, take time in our day, number one, to connect with God, to care for ourselves, to examine our hearts. The Bible says we are to examine our hearts. And sometimes we're so busy we're like, oh, but I have to do all these things for God and all these things for my family and all these things to provide. And we, we, we live a life that is distracted, mm -hmm. and distractions create division. Mm -hmm. And division eventually creates destruction. Wow. So if we don't take the time to care for ourselves, we are kind of living in a false humility where it's like, wow. I'm selfless. I don't really care about me. Well, Yes, we're not supposed to put ourselves first and be selfish, but we are accountable for how we take care of our bodies, mm. of our mind, of our time. So build a structure in your daily where you have a time of reflection, where you have a time like at the end of the day, what am I grateful for? Mm. We can't be grateful and, and anxious at the same time. So there is a time to examine and then there's time to just pause and be grateful. Mm. Be grateful for even the hardships, the Bible says. But what will this produce in me if I don't take the time to examine what is God going to accomplish through this? Yeah, that's that's a really important. It's so good. I love I love that you said that. And I think talking about the anxiousness of how we can't be grateful and be anxious at the same time. I saw the stat the other day I was reading. I don't, I don't remember if it was a message or on Instagram, um, but they were saying we have thousands of thoughts per day, and out of all those thoughts, it was around 60%, 70% are negative. Wow. That, I mean, even something over 50%, it's not even 50-50, mm -hmm. that all these thoughts that we're thinking, the majority of them are negative. Mm -hmm. So just making one thought be gratitude to be joyous, to be thankful, you're already diminishing the percentage of all the negative thoughts of what kind of culture um, is thinking. And why is it so human of us to be naturally negative? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but I do know that we can choose to not dwell on those thoughts. Um, and maybe we can speak to the climate that we live in today when it comes to mental health, anxiety, worry, fear, depression. Um, I think right now is an all-time high in our world, mm -hmm. um, and there can be many reasons for it, but maybe we could speak to the condition right now um, of, of the world that we live in. I think that we cannot be steady when we live in chaos. And so we need security to experience peace. Wow. And so based on where you're basing um, your thought life of where your security is coming from is where your heart is going to dwell. So if I think my security lies on the economy, my security lies on my relationship, mm -hmm. my security lies on uh, the stock market, then we would constantly be in chaos because it's not steady. It's not a place where you can just say, if I put my money here forever, it will be safe. Um, but if we place our safety in the hands of God, in the faithfulness of God, in that he will always be faithful to his word, even in a ta time of famine, he has provided. And you know that from doing ministry as a family. Uh, there has been times where God has blessed us and there's abundance. And there's times where, you know, we had to make sure we had the right amount of money in our hand. I remember growing up, 
uh, we would go to the grocery store and it was a time where it was a tight budget and uh, your job was to make sure it all added up to a hundred dollars and when I look back at that time you probably didn't know the reason why we were doing this was because that's all we had that week yeah. but instead of being like anxious about it or being like, wow, we only have $100 this week to spend, I made it a life skill. Yeah. I made it a game where you could also say, hey, we can still live a full life with what we have. And yes, we may not be able to pick seven snacks, but all you need is one for the week and make sure you had 12. And so it's just how we look at life at the same time, we can't limit our experiences yeah. to what's going on on the external because God has promised us abundant life. Mm -hmm. So how can we live the best life with what we do have, what we can control? And again, going back to we stand on the promises of God, no matter what's going on around us. And I think that every day we need to make that choice because every day, like you said, we're bombarded by the reality of chaos, of terror, of wars, of what will happen in two years, of who will be the next president. I like him, I don't like him, who are we gonna pick? And if we consume our lives with those things that we can't control, we end up in a place of chaos, yeah. mental chaos. Yeah, for me, I think it's just a reflection of the spiritual condition of humanity that, um, it, it indicates, to a certain degree, a lack of trust. Um, because, like, when you go on an operating table, right, and they put you under anesthesia, you're trusting that that's going to work, that you're going to be able to come back to life and not be fully unconscious, right? And then you're also trusting the nurses to do their jobs, the doctor to, to put the stent in your heart right. You're, you're, you're putting all this trust in medical and procedures and hands that really you're at that point of no control at, at all right and so i think it's kind of like that with god and life you have to completely trust him mm -hmm. but we like to give him part of our heart or part of our mind part of our soul and we put in these little boxes like he can have access to this but not my past mm -hmm. or he can have access to to certain thoughts but not all my thoughts mm -hmm. and so when we completely surrender and begin to trust him like you would trust an operating doctor in your heart, your life will be different. Because you don't have to worry. Because worth it, worry adds nothing to your life. It just creates more anxiety and stress. And so I think it goes back to that heart of simply trusting God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yeah, I mean, we even read in Scripture that, that God's peace goes beyond all understanding. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we try to make it make sense, yeah. but it doesn't add up. No. It, it, it doesn't make sense. There's really no way to describe his peace, to have joy and chaos, mm. to have peace that goes beyond, beyond understanding. And um, I can't help but think that sometimes we may not have peace of mind because we only give God a piece of our mind. Mm. That, oh, I can't give God this thought. You know, like, uh, this one he can handle, but this one I'm going to keep to myself. Yeah. I'm just going to keep on thinking it. Maybe we were even thinking it without even thinking about it, and it's just a constant thought in our head, but it's something we truly need to give up. Um, and I, I want to encourage you, maybe you're listening right now, and you're saying, I'm longing for this peace in my mind, that I, I know that God's peace is beyond my understanding, and I'm longing for that. I want to encourage you right now, just cast your cares upon him. Yeah. There's nothing too big. There's nothing too small. That There's nothing that he can't handle. There's no thought. There's no doubt. There's no weight that you carry. And so I, I want to encourage you, cast your cares. And also, um, maybe just call someone and let them know, hey, I'm dealing with this. Um, I know there's been moments in my life where I just had to call someone and let it out saying these are the thoughts going through my head. Yeah. They might not make sense. They're probably not the truth. Yeah. But these are the thoughts that are consuming me right now. And when you let that out, there's this peace that comes after. And after you can resolve the issue and talk out the solutions. Um, but I also want to encourage you, take a moment to pray. Um, it says by prayer and petition. Yeah. 
So pray and petition your circumstance, your situation to God. But also pause. Take a moment to reflect, to be quiet, to listen, to sit still, to tune out the thoughts that are going through your head and pause for a moment. And also praise. Be, th- be thankful. Be grateful. Um, and I truly believe if you walk through that, that um, those th- steps, that you'll, you'll find this peace on the other side. And that I, I think right now we can kind of talk a little bit about setting our mind on things above, right. um, what it looks like to, to switch our thoughts, um, to not just dwell on the negative, but to switch and to set our things, uh, our, our minds, not on things of the earth, but on the heavenly things, on his joy, on his peace. How do we make that switch um, from negative to positive? What are some maybe practical things that we can do to switch and set our mind on things above? Well, you mentioned something that you have to expose it. So the Bible speaks about taking our thoughts captive wow. and making them obedient to Christ. So if my thoughts are not 100% true, I should not believe them. Mm-hmm. So I always say you don't have to believe everything you think. Wow. And sometimes we do place our trust on what we're thinking and we're believing that is not 100% truth. So normally in anxiety, you're projecting something that is not real yet. You are thinking and believing that may happen, and now you are, as a self-protection mechanism, looking at all these potential realities that could happen in the future but are not real yet. So that's why anxiety is such a real fight. I don't minimize it. It's so crippling. It's so paralyzing. It's so invading. Like, it can cause you to have a panic attack. It could cause you to shake. It could cause you to not think clearly. It can cause you to have health problems because you are truly having a core belief that something that hasn't happened yet is going to harm you. And so the solution to that is realizing that this is not real yet. And while, yes, there is a possibility that something will happen to me that I can't control, there's a reality that God will be with me. There is a reality that he is for me. There's a reality that he will carry me as a good shepherd through the valley. There is a truth that overshadows the darkness. And so if if I start replacing those projected beliefs to the certainty of the promises of God in that possibility, what would happen if I don't have what I thought I wanted to have? God will be with me. He said he will provide for all my needs according to his riches and glory. Not to the riches that the world has, but to his riches and glory. So I know that I may not be able to escape hardship, but I can choose how to go through that hardship. So I always say have a plan of the worst case scenario. So let's say the worst case scenario will happen. How will I overcome that with God, with people? Because if it does happen, it's still not the end for me. Because God has promised me I am more than a conqueror. But to be more than the conqueror, I have to conquer. And this was a debate I always have with my mom. Like we always said, wouldn't it be great to be be victorious without a battle? Wouldn't it be great to be a conqueror without having to go through the hardship of winning a territory? And sometimes we have to win territories in our mind. Mm -hmm. Like the fears that you've been crippled by. Mm -hmm. Because at the reality, we are limited by our fears. If you're afraid of rejection, you won't ask the girl out that you may like or get married to. If you're afraid of failure, you you may never try something that you're not good at. Mm -hmm. So... Be careful with what limits your life. Because you may think that is the worst problem, but the worst problem is really not fulfilling the potential and the purpose God designed you to live for and by. So I just encourage whoever is listening to expose those thoughts. Because in our mind, the two thoughts are equally powerful. Our godly beliefs, our 
believes uh, in God's word and our just human beliefs or fear-based beliefs are equally p as powerful. But when we expose it and replace them, it's the word of God that triumphs. And the word of God lets us overcome and replace that lie with the truth, and now we can walk in truth. We can walk in the light. And we can just take one step. Sometimes we feel like if you've been kind of captivated by fears, you're just going to say this one prayer and never again struggle. Well, the struggle is not a sin. It's when we yield or bow down to the struggle that we end up destroying sometimes relationships or even the plan God has because we are crippled and we can't go on unless we call on to God. But the moment you call on to God, you can take one step. And darkness and light cannot be together yeah. so I just encourage you to expose it to take the identify that thought take it captive and say does this line up with what God says about me or about my life about my future mm -hmm. and then replace it with the truth yeah that's beautiful and I think like you were saying earlier you know it's important that we have this self-care mm -hmm. that if you really truly care about yourself, of your heart, your mind, and your soul, it's going to take that attentiveness that you you don't have to pay attention, mm -hmm. that you don't have to look inwardly and, and reflect. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about that that self care, I think it's really important that we talk about our soul, mm -hmm. that our soul, um, maybe what it is, mm -hmm. uh, why why it's important that we take care of it, mm -hmm. um, and this idea of keeping our soul a safe place. Mm. Um, when we were in this collection on wholeness, Lorenzo gave a message called so Soul Safe. And he, he presented this concept that, that the soul should be like a safe, that only things that are really important are stored in a safe. Yeah. You know, like our innermost being is our soul. And um, we, we got to be careful what we let in and what we let out um, and what we give access to it. Yeah, it says you're above all else, guard your heart. And so I think that safe is a guarding mechanism that you can guard your soul. And and Jesus wants to give you rest for your soul, but you gotta come to him. You gotta cast all your cares at his feet. And and he'll give you rest for your soul. So part of it is guarding it and having like boundaries, healthy boundaries in your life. It's also um, guarding it, but also surrendering so that you can experience the rest that Jesus wants to give you. And so it's, 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 a, it's a dynamic of both, of you guarding and also just surrendering so you can experience the rest for your soul. But I love that idea of like a safe, like you just don't let anybody have access to it. Uh, you should have the only code or the key or, or the way to get in. And then what's in there is important. Good. Your soul's important. Like where you're going to end in eternity is important, your soul. And out of the abundance in your heart, your mouth speaks. So what's in your soul and that, that life of yours is really what you live, what you think, and what you speak about. I, I teach on the R's when it comes to safe soul care. There's a time to rest. There's a time to reset. Mm -hmm. So you've been like out of order, I say. Like just take a time and reset your priorities. Like yeah. take that time, reset, um, renew, renew your strength. Mm -hmm. If you are feeling tired, mm -hmm. if you've been fighting the good fight, doing good things, and, and life is hard, and, yeah. and you're constantly battling thoughts, and you're constantly reframing and doing what you should be doing, you still get tired. So there's a time to just rest and renew your strength. And then there's a time to remember. Remember the faithfulness mm -hmm. of God. Remember the things that you thought you would never get through. And then in this season, you're thinking the same thing of the next like mm -hmm. struggle. But remember, he was faithful to you. He will be faithful again. Yeah. Write down the things that God has been so faithful to you in. Remember. C bring to mind the things that will help you find rest. Mm -hmm. We're so good about like going back and going back. It's called ruminating, just going back and going back. What if this and what if I would have done this and what if I, this happens? And what if 
God is faithful again. What if God does what he does every time? Yeah. It may be, look different in this situation. Maybe I've never experienced this kind of tri trial, but I can rest assured that he has been faithful before and he will be faithful again. So just renew your mind constantly. It's a constant thing. And it's, it's not based on like whether you're a good person or not. It's really a practice we have to develop and mm -hmm. constantly be alert, the Bible says. We have to be alert because the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. So he wants to steal your joy. He wants yeah. to steal your peace. And he knows our weakness based on the past. He knows what's going to shake our ground. So we shouldn't be surprised when he hits us where it hurts us. Mm -hmm. But we should know how to respond. So and so I think that um, just having a place where you uh, remember, hey, when is the last time I did a reset? When is the last time I just uh, rested for two days? I think like that was amazing to go for like five days and, and be able to like recharge is the one that I was missing like just recharge and and be able to come with a new f new energy and just uh, take the time to soak in and fill your cup with love with rest with peace and all the problems and all the struggles and all the challenges that we left here we're here so we weren't really escaping reality but we we're giving ourselves a time where we're saying, yes, because the battle is real, we need to rest. Because the battle is real, we need to reset. Bef what are the priorities I have to reset if I don't have time? Mm -hmm. What are the non-negotiables? Mm -hmm. what, what is my, my thought living? I need to reframe my thoughts. So I just encourage you to take some time even after this podcast and, mm -hmm. and go through some of the R's. Like, what are the things that you can do today that will change your tomorrow? I love how you even mentioned renewing your strength. And um, I've been in the process of weight training, and um, one of my good friends, he's a, a power lifter, and so he's been kind of coaching me on how to properly train in specific um, um, weight um, exercises, um, lifting weights. And so uh, the other day I went to the gym with him, and um, he said, we'll just start here. And I had about an hour and a half before I had to go to a baby shower. And I was like, all right, we'll start here. And we spent an hour and a half learning just how to bench press mm -hmm. and the right movement and just how shifting one little thing can increase how much weight you can lift. Mm -hmm. And um, I was with him. I was like, I want to see what my PR is. I want to see how much I have in me. What is my strength? Um, and so I, I go all out. And he's like, what are you doing? And I, he's like, you can't just start at your max. You have to build up. And I thought, no, like, then I'm exerting my energy on, on the weak stuff right. that I don't have the strength to do the most. Mm. Um, but truly, he taught me that you have to build up That's in so order good. to be the strongest, in order to do the what you're most capable of. Mm -hmm. And I, I go and I do my, my one PR, and I was a little under 200 pounds uh, of weight, and I look over to him, and he has all these plates on on his uh, barbell. And I said, how much are you lifting? He's like, close to 300. I was like, oh, that makes me feel great. <laughs> like, uh, But it, it made me realize a lot of times we compare our strength to others. Yeah. Um, but it's really important. I think the theme of this conversation was yeah. to be aware yeah. um, that we have to be aware of our weakness. So that way we can be strong. Yeah. The Bible says where we are weak, he is, we, he is strong, that he is our strength. And so um, I want to encourage you, maybe you're listening right now, you are weak, mm -hmm. that you can give that to the Lord and he yes. will make you strong. Um, and it's okay to be where you are, and you'll gradually grow in strength day by day, step by step. Um, and I say that all to say we, we must be aware, but it's important to acknowledge it. Yes. That you can be aware without acknowledging the truth of, hey, I am weak right now in this area. You might be strong in, in your heart. You might be strong in your soul, but maybe your mind is weak, yeah. and that's okay. 
but at least you're aware and you can acknowledge it and then decide whether what are the next steps to take. Yeah, and I think with the reps, like you said, you start with lightweight, but you gradually build. Uh, a lot of times we just want that instant result or that instant uh, look how strong I am moment instead of saying, well, I'm strong now because of the small steps I took. You know, I, I can be a, a black belt in jiu-jitsu because I'm a white belt who never quit. But you have to start small. You have to start in these steps of learning technique and learning strategies so that you can actually live more than you even think possible. And I'm sure if you keep in this journey, you'll look back and say 200 was my personal greatest strength moment, but now I'm at 300. And I can walk people alongside this journey with me and take them from the 100 bar moment, 200, 300 and plus. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the journey of wholeness because it's not all about us. Yeah. It's also inviting people around us to say, hey, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. We don't have it all together, but together we can be aware and we can acknowledge and we can help each other in our weakness. That's yes. part of it as well, that it's not you're not alone. There's nobody out there that you, that's not dealing with what you're dealing with. Yeah. You're not alone. And so just don't try to be alone and do it all on your own strength. Encourage mentors or people you trust to come alongside you and, and maybe add a little weight on you mm -hmm. in a sense of counseling and discipline and direction, but it will help you become so much stronger and able to get you through the next season that God has prepared for you. I think that's beautiful to acknowledge and be aware that who you surround yourself with does affect how your soul is in that season of your life. And while we're called to like love everyone and help everyone and reach everyone, there are some people that have access to all of us. And those are the people that we need to pray about, that their um, access to our life lines up to what God intended for us. So um, I, I just encourage people that are listening today to to just realize this is not a journey that you do on your own. Um, yes, you need a mentor, you need a pastor, you need a leader, you need counseling perhaps, uh, you need a coach, but you also need community. Yeah. You need people around you that can say, like your friend said, what are you doing? <laughs> like he didn't like hesitate to to really correct you in a very kind way. And if he wouldn't have corrected you, you'd have just been frustrated at a level you didn't need to be. And sometimes we put pressures on ourselves that are based on what we want to see in our lives that are not realistic to where we are. And I think that if we surround ourselves with people that have been there before or have knowledge where we don't have knowledge, we will um, spare ourselves from things that we should not experience, but we do experience because we're careless sometimes or sometimes stubborn. You know, we're like, I'll do it my way. And uh, we're stuck in this, like, I can do it. Watch me do it. I should be able to do it. But those are self-inflicted pressures that we need to recognize and just replace with what God intended for us. There's so many one another's in the Bible. Consider how you can spur one another in life, love, um, that we are supposed to encourage one another, admonish one another. We're supposed to love one another, carry each other's burden. So we know that God didn't just set up this book with rules and say, here you go, you should behave this way, get it done. But he is really a loving God that has provided a way for us to have access to everything we need for this life, but also have provided the church, the body, a family where we can grow together. So, so find a place. Find a place where you can grow with other imperfect people and spot each other um, so that we don't get crushed under the weight of life. Yeah, that's beautiful. Let's take a moment. Let's um, pray for those who are listening. Maybe they are dealing with areas in their heart, their mind, their soul, their strength, whatever it may be. I just feel um, it would be very beneficial to um, just um, finish this episode with a prayer. Yes. God, thank you so much, um, Lord, that you have a peace that goes beyond our understanding. 
Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you meet us in our brokenness, that you meet us um, in our hurt, in our pain, in our fear, in our worry, Lord, that nothing's too big for you to handle. So, Lord, right now, we just cast our cares upon you. Lord, I pray for anyone who's listening right now that might might be saying, man, that's me. I'm, I'm dealing with a broken heart. I'm, I, I just really need a peace of mind. Oh, I, I just, my soul just feels overwhelmed. Uh, I, I feel weak and like I have no strength. Maybe if that's them right now, I pray right now they would feel your presence um, in such a tangible way right now, Lord, that you that you would um, lift them up. And God, I pray, Lord, that we'd be able to trust you with every area of our life. Lord, that we wouldn't doubt for a second that you created us to live a whole and complete life life. So I pray, Lord, that you would give us a whole heart, Lord, that you'd give us peace of mind, that you would create a safe soul within us, Lord, that we would renew our strength, Lord, that we'd be able to live um, not in our weakness, but by your strength, God. And um, Lord, I just pray right now that we would live whole lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a great conversation. Yes. Thanks for being on the podcast. Okay. Continue to live by faith, be known by love, and be a beacon of hope. We'll see you next time. Love you guys.